Hi there, welcome back to class. So there is a bit of a thunderstorm going on right now, so I just want to warn you if uh, the video gets interrupted, uh, that is why. So we may need to restart it then, um, or so on. Um, so we're going to be talking about meiosis, meiosis 1 and 2 in this video, and this is how to do a meiosis drawing for a cell with a diploid number of 4 with each chromosome represented with a different color. So we're gonna start with our mother cell with the diploid number of four, 2n equals four, in G1 of interphase, just like we did back in the mitosis drawing. That way we, compare, we can compare these two processes a little bit better once we're done with our drawing. So we're gonna start with this mother cell, G1 of interphase, just like we did before, we're not going to be showing the synthesis stage of interphase for this mother cell or the second stage of growth for this mother cell. We have each individual chromosome represented unduplicated here. So these are unduplicated condensed chromosomes. We have four unique chromosomes, one, two, three, four. And for sexually reproducing species, since this is meiosis, this is the foundational mechanism to produce gam gametes. Gametes are sperm cells or egg cells. So those are the gametes that would combine for uh, sexual reproduction. So we have each individual chromosome here unduplicated. We have nuclear membrane intact. And then here you can see the centrioles. So we're gonna move into doing meiosis here for this cell. The first thing that is gonna happen, the first stage of meiosis one is prophase one. In prophase one, because this cell has gone through S, synthesis stage of interphase, the DNA was duplicated. And that's very similar to mitosis. The same thing happened in mitosis. So here you can see we have sister chromatids. But there's something different here um, about meiosis that's quite different than mitosis. And that is that tetrads have formed. So our chromosomes have matched up with their partner chromosome and its copy. So that pairing, the homologous chromosome pair, is called a tetrad. And those tetrads are going to actually exchange pieces of uh, DNA, parts of them. So they're going to effectively mix up maternal and paternal DNA. Because what makes these homologous cro chromosome pairs is that we got one from our mom and one from our dad. So the one that we got from our mom has copied itself and duplicated, so it's in sister chromatid form. And then the one that we got from our dad is also duplicated. What also makes these homologous chromosome pairs is that we have the genes located along those uh, chromosomes. So let's say that we had the gene for eye color located exactly right there on this chromosome from the dad that same gene for eye color would be located in the same exa exact spot for the uh, chromosome from the mom. So that together, there's a gene pair there. So when these, this homologous chromosome pair is in the tetrad, they're going to exchange pieces. When they're doing that, it's called crossing over recombination. And that is a permanent change and it's going to add the uh, genetic diversity to the offspring cells that are created because there's going to be new combinations of this individual's genes that they got from their mom and genes that they got from their dad. Okay, so our next stage of meiosis is metaphase one. And in metaphase one, you can see homologous chromosome pairs have lined up on the metaphase plate. Now in this drawing, I went ahead and crossed over both of the homologous chromosome pairs. That is actually what happens in reality. Every homologous chromosome pair crosses over. 
When you are representing this diagrammatically, you can uh, cross over every pair if you would like, or you could just cross over one pair to symbolically represent crossing over recombination. So when you're doing your chromosome drawings um, with the uh, meiosis drawings, you're either going to be asked to draw diploid number of four with four chromosomes, diploid number of six, or diploid number of eight, with each chromosome being a different color. So when you're practicing these drawings, that's what you want to uh, practice. So we have homologous chromosome pairs lined up on the metaphase plate right here. And this is metaphase one. Metaphase one is a very important picture to look at along with your mitosis drawings. Compare that to your metaphase in mitosis. Metaphase in mitosis is quite different. Sister chromatids lined up, line up in the middle of a cell, not homologous chromosome pairs like are lined up here. Okay, so after metaphase one, then we have anaphase one, where sister chromatids are separating uh, as in there's space between the uh, X-shaped things here, that these are each sister chromatids, okay? But the sister chromatid itself, the X-shaped thing, is remaining together. You can see there's four lobes here, okay? So we have a chromosome and its exact copy remaining together. So what are separating in anaphase one or technically homologous chromosome pairs, or tetrads. Tetrads are separating, okay? Okay, so then the next stage we have is telophase one slash cytokinesis. And in telophase one slash cytokinesis, we have the sister chromatids in each cell. You can notice this one is the black one, and this one is the green one with the orange. So those are the colors that are in this nucleus. This is a color-coded diagram. So these two, the pink, primarily pink and primarily orange, are gonna end up in that nucleus together because these two are going to this side of the cell, so they'll end up in that nucleus and these two are going to that side, so they'll end up in that nucleus. Okay, so our next picture is prophase two. So in prophase two, we have uh, the nuclear membrane Reef up, breaking up again. You can see it's breaking up again down here too. And then in metaphase two, we have sister chromatids lined up in the middle of the cell for each daughter cell. Okay, and then here you can see anaphase two. In anaphase two, we have the sister chromatids have now separated. So now they have that V-like structure. And we have both daughter cells represented because remember these are different unique chromosomes. They're, they're each uh, different genes on them. And we have our crossed over part that's carrying through there. So our last stage of meiosis is telophase 2 slash cytokinesis. So in telophase 2, you should be able to see the uh, nuclear membrane reforming around each nucleus. You're going to have four daughter cells that are each genetically unique eventually when they separate completely. So we want to go ahead and separate them completely. So we're going to end up in G1 of interphase. So here's G1 of interphase. 
for each of the new daughter cells. Now these daughter cells are special in that they're destined to become gametes or sex cells. So defining features of sex cells are that they're gonna have haploid number, half the number of chromosomes, and they're also each gonna be genetically unique from each other and from the original parent cell that started the process. Now let's go back to the beginning here and talk a little bit more about chromosome number. So this parent cell that started the process had a 2n number of 4. So that means we have four individual chromosomes. One, two, three, four. There. Okay, sorry about that. So four individual chromosomes. But this cell has a whole set of chromosomes for that species. So it's the diploid number. Diploid technically means we have half the chromosomes from the mom and half from the dad. Okay, but a more functional way of thinking of diploid is that within that cell, we have a normal body cell there basically. We have a normal number of chromosomes for that species. And as long as you're talking about a sexually reproducing organism, then this um, is going to work, this analogy is going to work. Chromosome number starts getting different when you start going into like plant species or maybe some insect species or something like that. So meiosis is the foundational process for sexual reproduction. It produces four gametes that have a haploid number and that are each genetically unique. So whether we represent that chromosome as unduplicated or duplicated, X-shaped thing, it's considered to be one in chromosome number. So this cell is 2N, and, so is, and, and as it goes through meiosis, it is 2N all the time here until this cell is also 2N. So until we get to prophase two, in prophase two is where we technically have haploid cells now, because remember each of the sister chromatids, the X-shaped things, that they represent one. So whether that chromosome is duplicated or unduplicated, it represents one, okay? So these cells are both 1N, or haploid number. Um, and then the daughter cells go through and continue with metaphase two and anaphase two, and we have all of these cells are considered haploid and end up at G1 of interphase and we have four genetically unique haploid daughter cells with a n number equal to two. The n number will always be mathematically half of the diploid number. All right, and that's it. We've done it. We've created gametes. Thank you.